Between the 12th and the 29th of November, people in Church of England churches all over Lancashire are being asked to pray and to think about what they can give to and through their local church. This isn't just for older members of our churches, but for all of us. Here at St Matthew's in Burnley, we have asked some of the young people in our church family to help us to think about giving. We started off by thinking about being grateful. Because if we're going to think about giving, then it's often helpful to start off by thinking about what we've been given. In the Bible, it says, every good and perfect gift is from God. So we thought about some of the good things in our lives. Going to dance class makes me happy. I'm happy that Joe Biden just won the election in America because this means that the people of America and the citizens could have a better future and hopefully things can improve with like levels of racism and tolerance of it. Happy news that, that I heard. Well, f- for this isn't too recent, but for, for a long time my um, grandma was in hospital and then after that she was in care. And um, earlier this year, my grandma came out of care and she was rehabilitated enough that she could go um, back home. And it's still difficult because um, my granddad has to care for her all the time. But it's really good that she's been able to be back home and, in, in, you know, in the comfort of her ho- own house. After the first lockdown, I was really happy that the other sports, the professional sports, uh, be able to continue. And even those ours weren't, at least we'll have the entertainment of the... Um, professional football on the CV. I'm happy that I'm being able to be back at school and that Covid's not made us have to go into lockdown yet. I'm grateful for the, the fact that the church has donated food in the food banks to people who are less fortunate in these times and who cannot have better income and can't sustain food for themselves, so the church has kindly donated that for them. I am really grateful for having the opportunities to start high school um, again, right, without having to isolate just yet. I'm grateful for all the new friends I've made, especially the ones that I didn't already know. I'm grateful for being elected for school council in September. I'm very grateful for the technology I have in 2020. This allows me to continue dancing through Zoom video meetings during lockdown. Technology also allows me to help keep in touch with friends when school was closed and family who live far away. And something that I'm really grateful for happened just today actually and um, my parents took us out on a walk locally today and I'm really grateful for this because even in lockdown, now we've gone into this new national lockdown and we can't travel far, um, it actually takes more effort to think about what to do on the weekends and how to get out and how to exercise without doing the same things all over again. So we have these OS maps and it's actually really good that you know my parents have put in the time to um, plan out a route and think of what to do you know, a day or two in advance and then actually do it with uh, me and my brother. great experience when serving at the Corpus Christi after being confirmed for the first time. Something special in my life that I'm grateful for is that I passed my SATs in year six because when you have a higher grade on your exams you can go on to higher things such as sets in school. Um, An experience that I'm really grateful for having happened a couple of years ago actually Um, with the company of servers, I was able, I had the privilege um, to go to the shrine of Our Lady of Walsingham, and this was really just formative for me. It showed me this whole other aspect of my faith, which prior to going to the shrine, I'd never really, you know, considered or thought about all that much before. I ne- never really had anything against it per se, but I just, I just wasn't really into it all. So it, it, it definitely provoked me to ex- explore, to read around the faith a lot more. And it, that in turn has helped me a lot in my understanding today. An experience that has 
recently happened that I am grateful for is that I was walking to school with all my friends and I slipped and I had mud all down my uniform. And I was really grateful that my grandma was able to pick me up straight away and get me some new uniform ready for school so I didn't have to go in with loads of mud on me. So there are some of the things we're grateful for. How would you answer those questions? A prayer. We're so grateful for all the things that you've given us, Lord God. Help us to give to others with the same generosity and joy as you give us. Amen. So we've started off there thinking about gratitude. And the reason that we've done that is thinking about gratitude helps us think about how and about why we might give. Sometimes we think we've not got anything to give, but we've all been given things. So we do all have something to give. And sometimes we think, well, why should I give? But God gave to us first, and that's why we give. In the Bible, it says, we know what love is because Jesus Christ gave his life for us. So we should give our lives to our brothers and sisters. Suppose someone sees a brother or sister in need and is able to help them. And suppose that person doesn't take pity on these people in need. Then how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, don't just talk about love. Put your love into action. Then it will truly be love. Quite often, when in churches we talk about giving, everybody thinks about money. But when we were just thinking about those things that we're grateful for, quite a few of them didn't even involve money. So a helpful way to think about giving can be to think about time, to think about talents, and to think about treasure. We might have some time that we can give to people, to spend with them, to show them that we care. We all have gifts and talents, things that we're good at, that we can use to bless other people. And some of us might have some treasure. That might be money, or it might be toys, games, food, that we can give away. For Christians, living and giving isn't just a nice thing to do. It's a way that we can obey Jesus' command to love our neighbour as ourselves and follow his way of life. We've got some amazingly generous young people here in Burnley and they've been giving to the church and the community using their time, their talents and their treasure. Here's some of the ways they've been doing that. Breakfast Club. Um, I enjoy it because I can give people who come in the morning, I can give them something to eat, something what they want, and it's really fun to talk to them and learn about where they come from and what they do. And what, what we get from it is I get the satisfaction of helping others and to talk to them and the others get like something that they wouldn't usually get. In August we did a school uniform giveaway at St Matthew's Church where people came and collected items of school uniform for surrounding schools in Burnley. I helped by sorting out clothes and helping people find what they needed. In future we plan to advertise the event on Facebook and within schools so we can help more people in the community. Before lockdown started I was a server in church but since lockdown has come in I've unfortunately not been able to do that. However, I have been writing letters to people in the church community who haven't been able to have access to the internet. During lockdown, I wrote a keep in touch letter for a member of the church who had no technology. I also helped out at the Christmas fair for the past couple of years and said some prayers in an online service. Hi there, what's your name? Oakley. 
And Oakley, during the first lockdown, you were a bit worried about some local people who lived near here, weren't you? Yeah. What were you worried about? Um, I was worried about, like, in the lockdown, I heard about that people didn't have food. So I was worried that they'd starve. And you didn't just worry about that, did you? You decided to do something about it. What did you do? So I dribbled a football um, 20 miles in 20 days on my lunch day. And um, I raised... You raised quite a lot of money, I think, didn't you? How much did you raise? Um, I raised £2,000. Wow. And that money's all gone to help local families have enough to eat? Yeah. That is fantastic, Oakley. Thank you so much for using your talent at football and raising an amazing amount of money. Thank you. Thank you. To help out my local church, um, I'm sure I don't do as much as other people, but um, before lockdown started, I used to serve um, at the altar, at Mass. Although, you know, as lockdown started back in spring, there was very little we could do to actually help church in person, not being allowed to go in church buildings. Um, however, there were a couple of things we could do, and one, one of those things was each week we'd film a midday prayer, and that was the prayer for Monday, and then that prayer could be uploaded to the church's Facebook page and onto the YouTube channel for people to watch. And another thing we did um, to try and help out the church in lockdown as well was writing articles for the parish magazine. So we'd write our articles and then send them in, and they could be published in the next month's um, publication of the magazine for people to read. And they were the two little things we did. Um, also, after, after, after the intense lockdown, we could go back into church buildings again. Although I couldn't, although we didn't have breakfast club like we did before in a church hall, which I'd done, helped out before, we did now have um, a church food bank. So now I, I volunteer each week there. Some of the things I've done for the church is the make and bake um, video on YouTube for Cat. Um, I've also done some of the readings in church on um, a video and in the church. I also go to Sunday school. Bye! What time, talents or treasure could you give? Why not get a bit of paper, divide it into three and then jot down some ideas? God, please help us to be generous people, always looking for opportunities to share what you've blessed us with. Amen. Like we said earlier, between the 12th and the 29th of November, people in Church of England churches all over Lancashire are being to ask to pray and to think about what they can give to and through their local church. It's not that we're not giving already, of course. As we've seen and heard, there's lots of phenomenally generous people in our communities. But because of the challenges churches are facing due to the pandemic and lockdown, we're all being invited to make a one-off sacrificial gift in this time of crisis. We're being asked to think about our time and our talents and our treasure and see what extra we can give to help and love others through the work of the churches. Did you notice the word sacrificial? that Father Alex just said there. What does that mean? Well, if you think back to our second lot of Bible verses, Jesus died for us. His gift cost him his life. And a sacrificial gift costs us something. It's not just giving something we don't need. It's giving something that actually might be a bit difficult to give. It doesn't mean it has to be huge but it does mean it might not be easy. Bishop Desmond Tutu said, do your little bit of good where you are. It's those little bits of good put together that overwhelm the world. So what could you give? What could you commit to give this November? That's a bit extra, that's sacrificial. Have a pray, have a think, and then maybe get in touch with your vicar, your church leader, and tell them about it. Generous, gracious and giving God, you so loved the world that you gave your only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and he gave himself even to death on the cross. 
you now give your spirit that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We pray that as your people we may learn to give out of what you have given to us and so meet the needs of ongoing ministry and mission in this diocese. Direct and inspire our giving, we pray, for the honour and glory of your name. 